Today we're going to uh, have the fifth and final video in the series and uh, we're going to discuss specifically uh, how we use the magnetometer uh, to configure a, a survey uh, to find a, a target of a given size and uh, then that will inform us about the line spacing uh, for our survey grid. I want to go uh, over a couple of other points uh, that uh, uh, need perhaps a little more explanation regarding the rules of thumb that I discussed in the past. Uh, the first one is uh, that uh, one ton of ferrous material equals one nanotesla at 100 feet. Now you'll remember that this is the induced formula to give us the size of anomalies that we get from various uh, uh, targets. Uh, in the interest of being uh, 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 worldwide with our uh, discussion here, I want to say that one ton is equal to approximately uh, 900 kg. And besides uh, a nanotesla, we, we can also use the terminology gamma. This is an older term, but uh, one that's still used. Uh, it's, it's equal to a nanotesla. And of course, uh, 30 feet would be uh, 30 meters. So 900 kg, one gamma or nanotesla at 30 meters. And then of course, as we lower the, uh, uh, the range, in other words, if we went to 15 meters, we would still see the one nanotesla or one gamma, and the mass would then go down by a factor of eight. So we would see approximately 110 uh, kilogram kilograms uh, would give us a one nanotesla at 15 meters. And uh, just to finish this out, uh, one gamma at uh, 7.5 meters, uh, eight goes in here approximately 14 times. So now we would see uh, 14 uh, kilo kilograms at seven and a half meters. So we can see again, we can see a very small target at quite a large range. The other thing I wanted to mention here had to do with um, the uh, angle of the Earth's field. And we were discussing that these anomalies uh, typically take on uh, the form of a sombrero where this is the high and this is the low and the object is actually here. If we were to uh, uh, extract a line, <clears throat> a survey line with our magnetometer, this is a plan view of the anomaly. If we, we, if we were to extract a survey line through the anomaly, what we would see is, uh, uh, here's the anomaly, and we would see a high to the south. We would go through an inflection point uh, where the object is, and then we would see a low to the north. I wanted to point out, however, so this is the high, the low, and this is where the object is. I wanted to point out, however, that this is only for the northern hemisphere. This would be reversed in the, in the southern hemisphere. So to be cosmopolitan here and talk about uh, world, uh, these surveys that are done in the southern hemisphere, this would be reversed. So uh, again, let's draw that again. Uh, if this is the north and this is the south and we're in the southern hemisphere, uh, and we extract this line, First of all, our anomaly would be the other direction, so we would, we would expect to see uh, an anomaly pattern like this, and so what we would see is we would see a low to the south and a high to the north, and the object would be here. So we would see a low to the south and a high to the north, and this would be in the southern hemisphere. So all of the discussions that we had regarding the shape of the anomalies, this is north, this is south, uh, are flipped for the Southern Hemisphere. just want to make that point. Okay, so uh, let's go again uh, talking about how far we can see objects. I'm going to use feet and uh, nanotesla. Uh, remember, remember our, uh, our chart and the, and the summary we, we did previously, which was that uh, uh, one ton, uh, one nanotesla at 100 feet. 
but that we have uh, some multipliers. We could, we could take this down to 250 pounds, we could take this down to uh, 32 pounds, we could take this down to 4 pounds, 1 nanotesla, 1 nanotesla, 1 nanotesla, and this, these uh, distances would, would have. So 50 feet, 25 feet, 12 feet. Now, remember though that we have multipliers, and our multipl this, this is purely induced. We have multipliers, we have perm, permanent magnetic uh, effect. Uh, the perm can add perhaps three to five. We have hollow. Again, the, the, the hollowness of the object can add uh, three, two to three. <clears throat> and then we have uh, aspect ratio, aspect ratio. And the aspect ratio, again, means that the object is longer than its diameter. It looks like something that would fly through the air or the water, for instance. And uh, that can also increase at a factor of two. So when we actually design the survey to find a given object, uh, we can take a couple of different tacks on this. We can, for instance, go with the most conservative estimate. The conservative estimate would then uh, say that we don't uh, take these factors into consideration. And when we make our line spacing, or consider how deep we should tow this, the magnetometer in the water, we would actually uh, say that probably somewhere around one nanotesla would be our uh, limits of detectability. Now the magnetometer can see perhaps uh, 20 to 50 times better than that. Uh, it can see, it, it, its own noise level is 20 times lower than this. but there are a number of other factors that are adding into the uh, noise uh, that are not from the, the system itself but are from the earth and they include micro pulsations which are momentary uh, disruptions in the earth's magnetic field perturbations due to the charged particle flux from the sun they have to do with magnetotelluric currents that are running in the earth they have to do with electrojet there's an, a high current uh, uh, electric field uh, flow in the uh, ionosphere which can generate some momentary disruptions to the Earth's magnetic field and there are waves. These are sea waves, these are conductive uh, water waves which have the uh, ability to generate small eddy currents as they move through the Earth's magnetic field. So all of these generate some noise and uh, they are external to the magnetometer and being measured by the magnetometer and they are not coherent meaning that they do not repeat normally uh, in a way that we could say filter them out. So what we would want to do is probably set a lower limit of one nanotesla. So how this informs our survey is that let's say for instance and we'll just take an example here that uh, we want to be looking for 250 pounds or approximately 100 kg of ferrous material. And uh, so we're now we'll sort of design a, a survey uh, uh, around that. And, uh, and then we'll, we'll use these perm and hollow and aspect ratio numbers to give us a, uh, an idea of what kind of anomalies we might expect from that 250 pounds. So we'll put this back up, 250 pounds equals one nanotesla at 50 feet. So that means that we could have a survey line. If we can see 50 feet on either side, we could have that survey line 100 feet wide. So this means that uh, on any given survey line, we will be able to see out 50 feet.